want to tell you a story this morning. It is a story that was shared a couple of years ago by John T. Quinnaman, an executive at Boeing. I met John at the Boeing Leadership Center and, and I introduced myself and I told him I was from Nigeria. And John told me, you know, Benjamin, I, I've got a story for you. And this story is personal because I think you can relate to it. And so John told me the story then and I want to tell you the story now. It's a story about a simple thing that we all do, that we take for granted. And so allow me to share that with you. The Boeing 747-400 jumbo jet landed in Nairobi, Kenya at the Jumbo Kenyatta International Airport. It landed to the drum beats and the dancing of the people of Kenya. You see, this was a special day in Kenya because for the very first time, Kenya was taking delivery of their own airplane, delivered by the Boeing executives. And it was, it was a festive moment. And you know, if you've ever been to Africa, we, we love to dance. And so they had drums out there, the music was playing. It was a big, it was a remarkable day in Nairobi. And as the plane landed, you could hear the drum beats. You could hear the celebration taking place. Something wonderful was getting ready to happen. At the airport, they had Kenyan airline officers. They had top government officials there. Everybody was there to experience this wonderful day. And so what happened here was this. The Boeing folks entertained the many guests. They essentially allowed them to walk through the plane to see for themselves this magnificent equipment, to enjoy it, to get a real good taste of it. And when they did that, it was really interesting because for the very first time, many people were able to really enjoy the, the inside and the entertainment of this remarkable plane. And it took place. Later that day, the Boeing folks opened up the airplane to what they call a static display. And the static display is when they allow other guests to come in and sit in the plane. They serve them soft drinks, they serve them peanuts. They made it feel as if they were actually flying that plane. And about a thousand people got a chance to experience that remarkable experience for the very first time. And at the completion of that static display, something else really happened. They took a number of executives on that plane on a flight over Kenya. And that lasted for another 30 minutes or so. They wanted them to get the feel, to, to be able to really appreciate what was getting ready to happen here. So they came down from that flight, and then they, they also entertained another two, 3,000 people coming through to enjoy this remarkable day. It was around 5 o'clock, John told me, and they were starting to clean up and get ready to lock up the plane, go back to their hotel, and then fly back to Seattle the next day. But then something happened. Something that was not planned occurred. What happened was this. They saw a group of young kids and a couple of adults on the outside of the parameters of the, air, of the airport. They stood there, sort of watching the proceedings take place. They were not invited guests. And John noticed them and he said, hey, can, can we allow them to take part in this? And the Kenyan handler said, no, no, we, we can't have that because, you see, they're, they're not invited guests. They're, they're the orphans from that grass hut over there. It was a single-story grass hut, the home of this orphanage for these young kids. And he said, you know, if you look very closely, they don't even have shoes on. They're barefooted. How can we allow them to get on this plane? John wouldn't have it. He said, he told his Kenyan handlers, he said, you know what, we're not going home tonight until you let these kids and these adults get on this plane. And so, finally, they agreed. They allowed the kids to get on the tarmac. They walked up to the stairs of the plane and stood there. 
And so John said to them, could somebody tell them that they now have permission to walk up the stairs? And so once somebody walked downstairs and, and told them in the native tongue, they said, you know, you now can come up and see the plane for yourself. But they just stood there. They stood there looking up at the stairway and didn't move. And at that point, John insisted, said, tell them this is their opportunity and if they don't take it right now, we're packing up and we're going home. But they just stood there. And so John walked down and, and with the aid of one of the Kenyans, he said, why don't you understand what we're telling you to do? He just said to me, he, he heard something that changed his life for the rest of his life. He said, they told him that they couldn't walk up the stairs because they didn't know how to walk up the stairs. Because they never had to walk up the stairs. Because it was an impossible thing for them to do. Can you imagine that? Something that you and I do on a regular basis, we don't even think about it. And yet, these, these small kids from the orphanage and, and their adults had never had the chance to do it. And so with the help of the Bowen staff and the Kenyan hosts, the children and the adults were taught to walk upstairs one step at a time. And John said that they were so afraid because they had the winds to their backs and they were scared that if they tried to walk up they would fall back. That many of them just simply turned their backs and walked up the stairs backwards. And many of them sat on the stairs and made their way up the stairs one stair at a time. John said this was a life changing event for him and for the kids. And he said when they finally got up to the plane, you could see in their eyes, they, it, it was like a dream come true. They, they couldn't believe what was going on. They were, they were in awe, they were in shock. He said, we, we asked them to sit on the first class seats. They sat and then they got up and then some of them started running back and forth through the aisles and we showed them the, the cockpit and they, they looked in and, and they just, they're just trying to comprehend what this was and what it was all about. And he said at the end of the tour, it was even more challenging to, to see them trying to walk down the stairs. He said we had to carry some of them. And some of them simply sat on the stairs and slid their way down. He said it was the most powerful, the most unforgettable experience he's ever had. So here's my takeaway. I believe that we all have that walking up the stair moment in our lives. When we have to do something that we've never done before. And we're asked to do it and we have to garner the courage to do it. Because essentially, my friends, walking up the stairs is refusing to allow perfect to get in the way of good. Walking up the stairs is not allowing someone else's opinion to become your reality. Walking up the stairs is defying the odds and rising to the occasion. Walking up the stairs is taking bold steps to change the world and refusing to be satisfied with, with things as they are and are willing to challenge the status quo. You know, when you, when you think about walking upstairs, you need to think about it in terms of not waiting for opportunity to knock, but building the door so large that opportunity has no trouble finding you. My message to you this morning is a very simple one. That we should all dare to walk up the stairs. Because the future is not a place that we're going. It's a place that we create. And so my friends, I'll leave you with one question. 
what steps are you going to climb? What steps are you going to walk up? 